and Margaret Ann Windsor. <clears throat> and I want, excuse me, I want to put this up um, first, and then I'll put up the video I just made that I want to upload. Um, I just heard on the news there was a woman, an American, that was in Uganda at the Queen Elizabeth uh, National Park, and she was uh, not laughing at the kidnapping, but uh, Elizabeth's not the queen, by the way, never was. She's a war criminal. Anyway, uh, this woman was, um, she had guides and everything, and I've forgotten, she worked with animals, I, I don't remember, but she's from the States here. She was kidnapped there uh, a week ago or about that time, I didn't keep track, but she was just released, I believe it was a $500,000 paid for her release, and um, she was on safari, etc., Okay, she's just been freed. Now, whether this has anything to do with me being freed, I've been a hostage, I've told it, in plain sight. It's what they did to me, how they did it, and everybody, uh, I'll, I'll leave it there. Only time will tell, I guess, and I'm 80 years old. Um, how much hostage money was paid to keep me alive? How much money paid, and not just money, but in... Uh, land being turned over and Brits forced to fight against their own best interests and against scientists who agreed to come over here and help keep me alive and uh, built NASA. Who do you think built NASA in Huntsville, Alabama? The irony, I just happened to be here and here and all this happens. Now, I don't know if that has anything to do with me uh, being released. It would give the appearance if people want to lie to themselves that I'm free to go here and there, and I'm not. My life is a living friggin' hell, and so was my children's. Can you imagine what my mom and dad went through when I was kidnapped and then to know what was being done to my sons and me? And they were helpless. Um, so now... I want to continue this little bit for whatever, if things um, come to a conclusion, or I guess pretty soon we'll see or not. <laughs> um, I wanted to mention Elvis, and I didn't get this up for Elvis was a twin. Aaron was his, uh, <laughs> and when I was handed my phone that this was switched, I didn't know it. It's Anyway. Uh, anyway, Aaron <laughs> has a couple of meanings. It's Aaron Hotchner as the FBI, like FBI investigation that was involved in all this. Um, and then Aaron was twin to Elvis, and he comes into play throughout a lot of this, and I've tried to put it up. I know this bouncing around. Let me put it here. Anyway, I wanted to put this added up and make it short so it goes up, and then you can see the one I'm going to put up next because it does connect, but um, I was trying to think a lot when I did the book, Elvis had just died, and so that was in 76 in July, and uh, there's a lot about Elvis in here, I mean, my husband, well, I'm not going to go back and tell all that, where I'm living and have been for a while, Elvis was here um, in Roanoke area, and uh, stayed here up on the second floor, but he was supposed to come back uh, a second time, and he didn't. He died, or if he's really dead or whatever happened to him, Elvis uh, was gone then, supposedly died. So he never came back here. Uh, he was supposed to have died. So now then, in this, on April Fool Day of 80, when I had been gotten out to... Uh, Abilene, Texas, that's where Laura Childers and her husband, Klein, their last name's Klein, J supposed to be John's, my husband's sister. So there's a question of, uh, I don't know, <laughs> probably is. But um, she got me out there under the pretense going to help me find a job and stay with her in her home there because she was CPA and so was he, her husband. 
later, by the way, in Austin, they moved to Austin, and they had a CPA firm, so they lived pretty darn good. Now then, um, she got me out there under the pretense, and when I spent, I didn't think I was going to make it back to Atlanta then. Uh, I called her at uh, Mesquite outside Dallas at a day's end. I had enough money for the night I'd spent at the uh, where you park along the interstate uh, a night or two getting out there. And uh, I called her before I left, and it was just fine, everything. Now then, I'm there at Mesquite, and it's that morning. And it's going to take me a few hours to drive up there, and I call Laura, and I tell her. And she says, you're no longer welcome. You can't come. I couldn't believe it. I mean, what happened overnight? Well, it didn't happen overnight. She deliberately got me away. And while I was gone, when I got back, my ex-husband, who we were supposed to have gotten the divorce, that's where Elvis, John stood the day our divorce was supposed, I think, of Tammy Wynette, <laughs> D-I-V-O-R-C-E, Little Joey and I are going away. I mean, some of this played out. I mean, really. Uh, anyway, I remember where I was when, I mean, it's like he knew everything that was going to happen to us. Anyway, while I was gone, the, uh, Aunt Laura would have had the letter from the FBI, two letters, ongoing investigation, national security involved. Done the book, got rejections, got one from Ravel, a religious that went before their board. And all this is happening to my children and me and scared me to death. So I go up to, uh, we'd move from Moonraker up the street to Owner Bentley Drive to Laurelwood. And uh, I took John up there and introduced him. I didn't know this was all set, set up prior. Took him up and introduced him to the manager and I said he's my ex-husband, and I wrote a book, and we've had a lot of repercussions. I didn't know about my kidnapping or couldn't verbalize it, who I am. And uh, John was sitting there with me. My deposit, I'd signed the lease. I'd live there at least a month, if not two. She totally understood he was just coming back and staying a few days out of the month, and uh, that was fine. It's kind of to protect us. He's okay. So now then, all these things start happening there, a letter from the FBI and all this. By the way, she told me, and I wondered why, and now I know. She said, by the way, my uncle was uh, the, uh, what word did she, lead investigator in the Patty Hearst kidnapping. Come find out, Patty Hearst's father uh, owns a lot of the media, which is Illuminati control. He owned, I didn't know it at the time, the Atlanta Journal. I'm running around here, and my ex-husband running around here, or at least I thought he was my ex-husband, running around here and uh, to all the media, taking all this about the mind control murders, which included Larry Flint, who had been shot in Lawrenceville about a year earlier. Lawrenceville, Georgia, while I lived at Moonraker. In Marietta, and uh, I'm just up the street at Laurelwood, and it gets into a night, well, I won't get into that, George Wallace was shot by a program shooter up in Laurel, Maryland, Lina Dempsey, the mother of the twins, that beat me up every day of my life, I was put there by Jeff K and the Illuminati, and uh, at age two in 1941, taken to that place, and the real Peggy had been killed just a week or two prior to me being put there, so it was planned. Carl had been murdered by their mother, Lina, this woman, um, up when he was about a month old, and just taken out and buried uh, at the church, but just in a box, no autopsy, no nothing. So now then back to this, and I was going to get into about Elvis. I'm just going to say that Laura got me out under the pretext of helping me get the boys away a job and I could stay with her a couple of weeks. She'd help me find one. And um, I'd have a job and I'd bring the boys and tr get them out. I, th I, I had the idea I was going to change my name even. Can you get it? Not knowing my name had already been changed.
and couldn't verbalize the kidnapping at the time. So now then, um, I get back there, my apartment's gone. They have allowed my ex-husband to have a key. I don't. I no longer have a key. He had moved it up in the same complex, but it was up a uh, few apartments up. And he had told me at one point to go up there and look at him, and I wondered why, because I got deathly ill. And now I know why. For some reason, it had been in, what do you say? It, it was, well, when I got back, I found out I had no apartment. His sister had gotten me away deliberately. While he took the apartment, they let him do it. I had this letter from the FBI. The manager says her uncle was in charge of the Patty Hearst. Well, the Hearst were uh, part of my kidnapping. They're your global government. And uh, I had no key, and he had moved it to this apartment, and I didn't know, nobody had diagnosed me. This whole thing's been a lie, what they've done to me. Um, I have an autoimmune disorder, and I'm allergic to toxic fumes, and my immune system attacks itself when I'm forced, fed, made to uh, inhale them. You have to get away from it. Uh, or suffer the consequences, and they've run me with using my illness. And uh, anyway, that's where I was almost killed. I'm not going to get into it again. I get cold when I, I've tried to tell it a couple of times lately, and I just get like ice cold, and uh, it's so horrible. But in, anyway, uh, I was almost killed, and I no longer had an apartment. And um, I'm just going to leave it here because I've tried to put all this up and it gets uh, telling things twice or three or four times. I was shoved in the car, went for a talk screen, and uh, that's not what happened to me. It was not done. And um, I remember Philip and Nancy, I thought I was going home. Uh, and later they tried to tell me the hospital to get out of it, that the people involved, Chilton, and he wasn't supposed to be there. He was playing Beecham. These are doctors that are, I don't know if Beecham was still alive not long ago and working. Anyway, this is crimes on top of crimes. No talks was done that I'd gone there for, and Lois Pearson was the one that did it. I'd gone to school, CIT school out at Lockheed with her. That's where I met the Aussies, Australians that were my friends, by the way. Oh, uh, so now then, I am thinking I'm coming home, and that was hell that I'm leaving out there. I put some of that up. And instead, Lina Dempsey is over there waiting on me from Alabama. She's over there deliberately, and I'm stuffed in a car, in her car. And I remember Nancy and Philip and my ex-husband were there. I thought I was going back to the apartment that's his now, not mine. My deposit used everything illegal. Bank account didn't have much, $350 in it, but I had that. It was taken. Now that I'm stuffed in the car, like this criminal, you put your cops put their hands on your head and shove you in the car or put you in the car. So I'm with her going back to Alabama in the condition I'm in, and God only knows how I f the hell I was in. And um, instead, when we got to Huntsville, that's the day before Easter, Sunday, the 6th of 80. So that's Saturday. And... Um, I told Dempsey, I mean, I'm in pain. I think I can't live, but I've got to live for my sons to make sure they're okay. And um, she said, I'll call the cops to you. Well, I know now why she had to end with the cops, because uh, my kidnapping, who I am, she killed her twin. She would be subject to uh, the gas chamber back then, much less if the truth about me were told. Now then, so that's why NASA, all of that, all of it, had to do with my kidnapping and the bringing over of Werner von Braun, a beautiful man, just like Julian Assange is. Tell the truth, WikiLeaks, the ones that go against the liars, the Illuminati that kidnapped me. 
and have your global government in place under the guise of the United Nations, right up next, or in New York City, um, where the Rockefeller headquarters is. Uh, am I right there, Hillary Clinton, who become involved in the Rockefellers? Of course, she's an Illuminati. Uh, she's been to their meetings, and Elizabeth and the whole group up there in Congress are probably members, to tell you the truth. Why don't they tell you all this? So now then, back to this, if I can get this up, and I meant to make it short. Um, I want to get back to the Elvis input. That's when she made me go in there, because I had no money, no clothes, and she was going to call the cops, and they would have come out and... So she left me there, Crestwood, and it's a regular hospital, but I don't know what story she told them. She didn't tell them what was really put in me or anything. I, I don't know that she mentioned the book to them, but I did. But anyway, um, that was Saturday, and next day's Easter. And they made me go in where they have an Elvis impersonator. And he sings and dances around and all that. And I wonder why, because I knew Elvis. I had the sense that I could remember some um, after what they'd done to me. And I remembered writing about Elvis, and he was one of them that was a mind control murder. So now then, um, I don't remember. There's a lot about this imper Elvis impersonators, but... I remember the other day, Channel 10, um, it was a retirement out Brandon Oaks here. I can't even get a home. <laughs> um, deprived of everything. And uh, they had an Elvis impersonator out Brandon Oaks. That has nothing. I don't know why they had the person out there. It just, I was watching it, and I guess I thought I would mention it. But I'm here where Elvis... Um, stayed up on second floor, his picture's out front, and he's waving, he looks really good. But he has to do in this ongoing, uh, whatever you want to call it, unfolding. And um, I'm going to leave it here. Uh, I, I do wonder if um, it would be so nice for this to finally be told and how much hostage money was paid for me to live to die another day, and my children. But the woman was just released for 500, I believe, thousand dollars ransom in Queen Elizabeth um, National Park is where I believe she was across in Uganda. And she was on safari and was kidnapped. And I uh, just wonder if it has to do with Maybe that this is all going to be told and I get to see my babies again.